Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. In this video, I want to demonstrate using effects sends and talk about the difference between post pan, post fader, and pre fader sends. I'll also talk about the new sends on faders and independent pan options that were added in Logic 10.4.2. So, if you don't already know, the most common purpose of using a send is as an effects send. So this splits the signal off of the channel and routes it over to an auxiliary channel where you can add effects. So typically these are time-based effects like reverb, delay, etc. So I'll just create a new send by clicking on the send tab, go down to bus, and I'll just route this to bus 12 since it's available. And you'll see the send pops up here and you can control the send amount right here. When you create a send, Logic automatically creates an auxiliary channel strip or an aux track for you. And you can see here the input on this aux track is bus 12. So what I'm going to do is right click on this and choose create track. And what this will do is it'll put the aux track near the piano track that I'm going to be using for demonstration. So I'll go ahead and solo this as well. And I'll rename this reverb. The reverb I'm going to load on this aux track is Valhalla Shimmer. It's a really shimmery really spacey, ethereal uh, reverb plugin. It's one of my favorite plugins. And I'm gonna make sure that the mix is set to 100%. Anytime you use time-based effects with an effect send, whether it be reverb, delay, whatever it is, you wanna make sure that the mix or the blend between the dry signal and the wet signal is set to 100% wet. You just want to hear the wet signal on the aux track because we're already going to hear the dry signal off of the main channel. Now I can adjust the send level or the send amount here. So if this is all the way down, we're still just gonna hear the dry signal. So here's what the piano sounds like dry. And here's what it sounds like with a bit of the shimmer plugin rolled in. So now that I've got my reverb send set up, let's talk about signal flow. From a signal flow perspective, these are a bit confusing because a lot of people think that the pan knob comes before the volume fader. It's actually the opposite. The channel strip signal flow goes input, audio effects, fader, volume fader, pan, then output. A lot of people think that the pan comes first just because it comes before the fader on the channel strip itself, but that's actually not true. So where the send fits in the signal flow depends on the type of send that you choose. To demonstrate these, I'll bypass the reverb for just a bit. So post pan puts the send after the fader and after the pan knob. So affecting the volume or the pan on the main channel will affect the volume in the pan on the aux track. Just make sure that your aux track's input is set to stereo so that you see the panning changes. And the reason why you're seeing the metering change on the aux track but not on the main channel is because I have pre-fader metering turned on. So you can go up to mix pre-fader metering and you can turn this off and then you'll see the changes on both of them. So essentially all we're doing is doubling the signal when we don't have that reverb turned on. Post fader puts the send after the fader, but before the pan. So this means that volume changes will be affected, but pan changes will not. So no matter what I do with the pan knob on the main channel, the stereo field stays the same on the aux track. Pre-fader puts the send before the fader and the pan. So any changes to the fader and the pan will not affect the signal going to the aux track. So 
So you can see that the signal going to the aux track stays the same no matter what I do here. However, I can still affect it by adjusting the send amount up here. So what are some different uses for these? Well, when you use post pan, if you pan the main channel, the reverb or whatever time-based effect you have loaded on your aux track can have a tendency to go askew off to one side or the other, depending on the pan adjustment that you make on the main channel. So if I pan the track, I typically switch this to post fader because now any pan adjustments I make will not affect the stereo image of the aux track and my reverb will remain center. Now, the signal you're seeing on the aux track is a bit askew to the left already. That's just the way uh, the piano was mic'd up. The left channel is a little louder than the right. But any pan adjustments I make on the piano track does not affect or askew the reverb in any way. So an exception to this is when I'm working with doubled up instruments that are panned equally left and right. So for example, if I had doubled guitars panned left and right, I would actually use post pan for this because if I use post fader, all of the reverb will be center and it may be a bit too dense sounding and it can also downplay the stereo image. So I typically use post pan for center pan tracks and double panned tracks. And then I use post fader for single tracks that are panned, but I want the reverb to stay center. Now pre fader, I have a couple different uses for. I use this when I really want to blend the wet and the dry signal independently and I don't want the dry signals level to affect the wet signal. So you can see that even with the dry fader almost all the way down, you still hear the full effect of the reverb. This way I can independently control the blend between these two. I've also used pre-fader sends when I set up headphone cues for the musicians. For example, the singer may want to hear a different mix than what I'm hearing in my headphones or in my monitors. This way I don't have to go back and alter the mix if the musician wants to hear less guitar, bass, or drums, for example. Now one new option in Logic 10.4.2 is this sends on faders option. When you turn this on, it lets you control the send amount from the fader that's down here. So any tracks that don't have any sends, you'll see that they don't have a fader anymore because there's no send amount to control. And to get back to just adjusting the regular volume levels, you just disable this feature. Let me turn this back on. And I wanna show you one more feature. There's also this option for independent pan. Notice that when I turn this off, there's no pan control here. If I turn this on, this allows you to independently control the pan of the send. So this is not the pan of the channel. This is actually a separate pan knob just for the send. So this really gives you full independent stereo image control over your sends. For example, sometimes I like to pan the toms in my drum mix and I want the drum reverb to pan with the toms but not as much as the dry signal. So I'll pan the individual tom tracks pretty hard, but then just slightly pan the reverb send. So the reverb doesn't get exaggerated in the stereo image. So that's a great use for the new independent pan feature. So that's how to use sends in Logic 10.4.2 and higher. Again, I just wanted to do an update on this since there were some new features. I've also updated my website at carneymediagroup.com. You can check out links to my social media there on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon, or you can contact me directly if you need mixing, mastering, or any sort of production work done. I'll also be writing up articles to supplement my new YouTube videos if you like reading rather than watching. So again, check out the new site at carneymediagroup.com. If you like the video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thanks for the support, and thanks for watching. Requiem for a stranger I can't believe her.
Could you die at such an age? A suicide without a page to save a life.